So I'm going to record for you now my first day sermon. For those of you who weren't able to be in shul on the first day of Rosh Hashanah, um, here from my uh, home, here down uh, uh, down the bottom of uh, Coppins Road, is um, his first day sermon. Uh, and I talked, of course, at the beginning about the difficulties of the last 18 months, the COVID pandemic, um, all the issues that have come from that and all that's going to come from that. There's a lot that really we have to reflect on. But one thing I found myself actually helpful was spending time more alone. Funny to say that, really. More time with myself, more time to learn, to study, to read. Um, I know many of my colleagues felt that we have more time with the family. Being a rabbi is a job where you are exposed and suddenly having more time with family was really quite something very special. So being on your own, if you learned to be more with yourself, that was something really great about um, the last 18 months. But of course, living separately is something we can't do. We can't live separately from others. We often feel a part of something bigger, whether it's our street, our local neighborhood, our community, the nation. We often feel that. We felt it over the last many, many months from the beginning of the pandemic when we were outside clapping to the euros and even to after when i even gave my sermon the the victory of emma other kind of course in the us open in queens we want to help others we want to allow others to survive to get through and the amazing work we've done as a community to support those within the community um, who have found it tough as well as those outside who also need our help and our support as well. So how at the same time can we hold the I and the we together? How can we hold the individual sense of me on my own as a person, separate from others, together uh, with the sense of being with something, part of something greater? And there are two models that I bring to think about this from a text called the Midrash, which is about 1600 years old. The first model, one rabbi compares the Jewish nation to a sheep. That could have been another uh, organ, organism, I suppose. Could have been humans that we use or any other animal. But the point is that the sheep is made up of many organs. Each individually has their place within the working and functioning of that specific animal and so he compares that to us as a people where we each have a specific place we each have a role we're made up of individuals when one acts wrongly of course others can be affected by the act of that individual and the follow-up story to this model is quite a famous story of a boat where there are individual bores a holes underneath his seat and the other sailors say, what are you doing? You're going to bring this boat down. To which he replies, well, it's my seat. I can do what I want underneath the seat. I compared this to deciding not to be vaccinated, which, of course, is a big issue. If I decide not to be vaccinated, it could be my own choice, my choice over my body. But, of course, I might, under certain circumstances, affect others um, if I'm less protected, uh, um, of course, to COVID. Now, this model is a very individualistic model, isn't it? It's about me as an individual. The only restriction on what I can do is when it comes to damaging other people. So in this model, the individual, in a sense, trumps, dominates the feeling of being part of something. I'm only feeling part of it as long as I don't damage other people. Yeah, I'm with people, but I've got my very, in a sense, self-centered sense of individualism. And there was a second model where another rabbi compares us to a soul. And here, we're all, as a people, considered part of one soul. There's much less differentiation here into individuals, separate units. We're thrown together, so to speak. In the language of the Talmud, we're told we are all guarantors for each other. We're all responsible for each other. Here, the we comes first, the being part of a greater unit, picture, greater sense comes first before we think about what we as individuals need.
So I suppose the question is, everyone, does one have to dominate the other? Does the I have to dominate? And the writer Jonathan Haidt, who wrote a fascinating book called The Righteous uh, Mind, really fascinating book that's worth reading, there talks about the challenges of Western society, where there is a greater sense of individualism, and that in other societies, more homogeneous societies, there often is a greater sense of being part of the we, part of the together, before the individual does what they do. Maybe we constantly swing between the I and the we. Maybe sometimes we find meaning on our own as individuals, developing ourselves. Sometimes we find more meaning by being with others. And maybe that swinging, that movement between the I and the we, not letting one dominate the other, is healthy, is okay. And I think Jewish prayer is a model here. Here we can think of the whole community in prayer, men and women, coming together, each with their own baggage, their own experiences, their own adulations, their own happinesses and their own losses and their own traumas, coming together as one greater unit, the community. Think of that experience of Ni'ila or Kol Nidre. I don't know how sad it is that we all won't be together, but just feel that sense that we have when we're all together. That's the greater we. And then when we leave, we take our baggage with us. We go back into our life and to, and to our challenges and issues and difficulties and hopefully work them through as separate units. So I wish you Shana Tova and the year of balancing between yourselves as people and the togetherness that we all feel being part of something greater. Shana Tova.